Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Ku, and in this video, we'll talk about ways to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We are joined by Stanford medical student, Ashley Stevenson. Thanks so much, Rachel. Glad to be back. A quick review of some important disclaimers. While we will talk a lot about COVID, this video series should not be used for personal medical advice. If you're worried about your own health, please talk to your doctor who knows you and your medical needs best. In some videos, we may also talk about legal issues that have come up during the pandemic. Our aim will be to make you aware of these, but once again, you should talk to a lawyer if you have any legal concerns of your own. Another important point to mention is how new COVID-19 is from a science perspective. I know it feels like we've all been dealing with it forever, but researchers are still learning about the disease. The information in these videos is the most up-to-date to our knowledge at the time of recording, but we may keep learning more. And finally, we have no financial conflicts of interest to declare. That means we're not making any money on this. So with that, let's get started. Tell us, Ashley, what will we be learning about today? In this video, we're going to talk about the recipe for COVID prevention. Wear masks, practice social distancing, and use proper hand washing technique. All right, the first ingredient to our COVID prevention recipe is pretty simple. You just have to wear a mask. You should wear a mask whenever you are around people you don't live with. Ashley, could you tell us who we are protecting when we wear masks? Yes, good point. Most people think their masks protect them from catching the virus from other people. While this is helpful, it's also important to understand that when you wear a mask, you're actually protecting other people too, not just yourself. This is because the mask catches droplets coming from your own nose and mouth and stops them from traveling to other people. Yeah, so when other people wear a mask, they are protecting you. This is why it's so important that everyone wears one. Your choice to wear a mask keeps everyone around you safe. If you don't wear one because maybe you don't feel sick or don't feel like it, you are potentially putting people around you at risk. And if other people don't wear a mask, they are putting your health at risk. And don't forget, keep your mask on when you're talking to someone. That's when the most droplets can escape. There is also a proper way to wear a mask. It should cover both our nose and our mouth, not just one or the other. When we take a mask on and off, we should grab it by the sides or the ear loops and avoid touching the front of the mask. Okay, so then can I use anything as a mask as long as it covers my nose and mouth? Not necessarily. It is okay if you don't have a medical mask. Cloth masks are fine, but make sure to wash them after you wear them. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, recommends double masking. That means wearing a medical mask over a cloth mask. This is so it fits better and catches more droplets from escaping. There are a few things, however, that research shows do not work well. Bandanas and neck gaiters, for example, are not very effective. You also should not wear a mask that has a valve on the front of it that funnels air from your nose and mouth to the outside. We do want to mention, though, that a bandana or neck gaiter is still better than no mask at all. If that's what you have, everyone will appreciate you wearing it. So, Ashley, what's step two of our recipe for COVID prevention? Step two is social distancing. When we breathe, talk, or cough, most of the droplets we let out can only travel so far. When we are physically farther away from other people, it makes it harder for the virus to jump from one person to another. Healthcare professionals recommend that you stay at least six feet or two meters away from anyone you don't already live with. In addition to this, isn't it also better to meet outdoors and indoors? Could you tell us why? Sure. It's more difficult for the virus to jump from one person to another if you are outside for a couple reasons. Let's quickly review those now. Outside, there's space to spread out, so it's just easier to stay at least six feet or two meters away from people you don't live with. The wind helps too. When you're talking to someone outside, the breeze can blow away virus particles in the air. Remember though, you still need to keep your mask on at all times possible, even if you're two meters apart. Oh, is that why sometimes restaurants can open for outdoor dining, but not indoor dining? Yes, precisely. Wait, but then what happens when you are inside? Well, first, we're often really close to other people indoors because there's just not enough room to spread out. Second, the air in the room is trapped inside, 
And so any virus particles in the air might circulate around the room and spread to multiple people. There are special filters that can be used to clean the air, the ones used in hospitals, for example, but not every indoor business uses them. And unfortunately, we have no way of knowing which businesses are using them and which ones aren't. Okay, then. So the key second rule in this COVID prevention recipe is, if you're going to interact with anyone you do not live with, meet them outside and stay at least six feet apart or two meters whenever possible. I have one follow-up question. Does it matter whether I meet up with my friend indoors or outdoors if we both keep our masks on? That's a great question. We talk more about how to most effectively prevent COVID spread in other videos. But as a quick answer, meeting outdoors is always better due to increased ventilation, even if you are masked up. All right, it's time for the last step of our COVID prevention recipe. What's our final step, Ashley? This is a super simple one, Rachel. Step three is to wash your hands and the things that you touch regularly. Great, but does soap and water actually work in killing the virus? Yes. Isn't that amazing? It's actually super easy to kill the virus with soap and water. So if you wash your hands well with soap and do it regularly, you have a pretty low chance of getting sick from touching something. But there is such thing as proper hand washing technique. What's the proper technique? Why does that make a difference? To wash your hands properly, count to 20 and make sure you are getting every part of your hands. There are lots of parts of our hands that most of us commonly miss when washing them. For example, make sure to wash under your fingernails, in between your fingers, and on the backs of your hands. The virus enters the body through our mouth, nose, or eyes. So we should try to avoid touching our faces too. Oh, okay, yes, that makes sense. One more thing. We should also try to clean objects that we touch regularly. Transmission occurs mostly from virus droplets in the air that enter our body through our eyes, nose, and mouth. But we do know that the virus can survive on some surfaces for a few days. And so while it's not very likely, it is sometimes possible for us to catch COVID this way. Tell us, Rachel, what are some objects you touch daily, for instance? Hmm, like doorknobs in my house or my phone? Precisely. It's generally good practice to disinfect commonly touched surfaces regularly. This might include doorknobs, microwave buttons, fridge handles, countertops, and other handles or appliances. Phones, tablets, and computer keyboards should also be cleaned frequently because the virus might be able to survive on them for a while. If you have a work badge or anything you tend to take out of the house a lot into public spaces, really, those two should be disinfected just to be safe. Okay, good to know. So what can I clean these with? Soap and water too? Yes, that's absolutely one option. Just like with your hands, soap and water works great here. You can wipe down counters and commonly touched objects with a soapy cloth, or you can also use cleaning wipes that have some bleach in them. Oh, that's good to know. I'm gonna do that when I get home today. Awesome, I will too. On a related note, this is why so many travel restrictions have been put in place. These protections are to prevent spread, especially when the rate of COVID is high in our community. The more places you travel to, whether it be the gym, grocery store, restaurant, etc., even when you're wearing a mask, the higher the chance that you'll come into contact with someone who's sick or enter a place where there might be virus droplets hanging in the air. The restrictions are frustrating at times, but I see now why they are so necessary to abide by. But what happens if we do need to travel for some reason? Yes, that's also important to think about. If you need to travel for an essential reason, whether it's by plane or by any other public form of transport, you can take some precautions. You should double mask and wear eye protection, like goggles or a face shield. And of course, minimizing your travel is key to helping us all stay healthy and prevent spread. We know these restrictions can be frustrating, but we have to be patient and work together to protect our communities now more than ever to give time for people to be vaccinated and to avoid another COVID wave. Yes, definitely. So let's finish by talking about what we learned in this video. The most effective things we can do to protect ourselves and other people from COVID is to follow our trustworthy recipe, which is practice social distancing, mask up and wash your hands properly. And even if you have been vaccinated, it's still important to mask up for the moment as research about transmission continues 
until we can get most of our communities vaccinated and to prevent spread. Thank you, Ashley, for joining us today. It was my pleasure. We hope this video provided you with answers that you can now share with your family and community.